Yo, 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 yo. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. This right here is the Behringer X XM XM8500. It's pretty much exactly like an SM58, and an SM58 is pretty much exactly this thing that I always use, an SM57, except an SM58 has this little, this little ball thing on the top. I feel like I'm a stand-up comedian when I hold this thing. You gotta hold the mic like real low, like this. So yeah, this microphone is amazingly like 20 bucks. It's a dynamic microphone, which means that it's good at blocking out kind of outside noise. A lot of people use microphones similar to this one for live recording type stuff. So if you're like a band playing live or something like that, you'll see a lot of microphones like this. And mind you, $20 is an absolutely insane price for a microphone. So if this thing is actually good, that's going to be a big deal because the SM57 costs a hundred bucks and this one costs a fifth of that. Hi there, it's me from the future, and I'm here to provide you guys with a little bit of insight, a little commentary, a little director's cut on all the very scientific tests that I do in this video, and just let you guys know what I think about this microphone after I've actually heard the audio recordings. So the first thing that we need to check out here is the build quality. How does this thing feel? Not gonna lie, surprisingly really good. It's all metal and everything, it feels heavy, it feels like it's maybe a little bit lighter than the SM57, so I was actually right about this. The SM57 is about one tenth of a pound lighter than the Behringer, which I'm kind of impressed that I was able to detect that 0.1 of a pound difference, but you know, here we are. But the body and everything feels the same, feels nice and metal-y, <laughs> I don't know. But now we gotta run it through a couple very scientific tests here. The first one is this one that I've seen people do before where they like rotate the mic around. This is zero degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 90 degrees. And this is zero degrees, you know, take that for what it's worth. This one wasn't anything crazy, pretty standard results here. This is kind of what you'd expect from a dynamic microphone. Another thing I did when I made my SM57 review, which you can watch, boom, right there. You'll notice a lot of rappers and singers and whatnot will hold the microphone like this. They'll like grip the top of the microphone when they're performing. So we're going to do a couple little variations of that and see how it changes the sound. This is just regular grip. This right here is about a half cover. This right here, I'm covering the sides, but leaving the top exposed. And right here, I am just completely covering the microphone. All right, this test kind of surprised me because when I did the same thing with the SM57, there was a big difference when I did the half cover and the other different variations. But this one, there was not a huge difference unless I was completely covering the microphone. It probably has something to do with the pop filter ball thing. Either way, I was pretty impressed by this one. Another good thing to note here that I'm going to test out is the handling noise. So handling noise can be a big thing, especially for specifically handheld microphones. So I'm just going to toss this thing around in my hands and see how bad the handling noise gets. This is me testing out the handling noise. Let's see how well you can hear my voice left hand right hand left hand right hand tossing it up in the air doing 360s with it so this thing did pretty good with the handling test. I was really tossing that thing around and it didn't pick up that much noise. I would say the handling noise on the SM57 is worse than the handling noise on this thing. So definitely a thumbs up for me on that one. So even though this is meant to be a vocal microphone, I'm going to do a little guitar test on it just to see how it sounds. <laughs> It's all right, there's nothing super crazy about that, but it does pick up the sound of a guitar, so that's a good thing. I would probably still use the SM57 if I'm recording instruments in most cases, but I would really need to do like a side-by-side -side comparison to figure out which one is actually better, and we are not doing that in this video, so. <laughs> Another little test that I've seen a lot of people do is they'll say a sentence that has a lot of like p or s type words in it to test the, um, what's that word? Plosives, they're called plosives. That was the word I was looking for. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. <laughs> okay, so obviously that one, very scientific test there. I didn't even actually do the test properly, but I think this thing definitely helps to reduce those kind of plosives. However, if you really wanna get rid of all those sounds entirely, get another pop filter, like one of these, hold on, one of these things, just use one of these. So another one of my famous patented microphone tests is called the Joe Rogan podcast test. I'm basically just going to put on an episode of Joe Rogan or any podcast of your choosing. I'm going to play it at full volume on the other side of the room, walk over here, and then see how well it picks up the podcast from all the way back there. We're going to pick the new David Goggins Joe Rogan episode because that's going to get me hype. That's unacceptable. Full volume. Going over here, it seems pretty loud to me, so we're gonna see how well it picks it up. Here's me talking. Let's see if you can hear Joe Rogan in the background. Hopefully not, because the 
point of the test is so that you don't hear them talking. I can't even hear myself talking, bro. So obviously you can hear them talking a little bit, but for how loud that was when I was recording that, the results of this test actually really impressed me. When you turn your phone to full volume, it does get pretty loud. And when I was recording this, I was sure it was going to pick up the noise really bad in the background. So yeah, this one definitely impressed me a lot. It wasn't perfect, obviously, because you're not going to completely cancel out the noise in the background, but I say it definitely passed this test for sure. So yeah, honestly, at this point, I don't really know how many more scientific tests we can do. I almost forgot another test we can do. <laughs> that test right there is to calculate the... <laughs> It's called blowing into the microphone really hard test. So yeah, now I think we've maxed out our scientific testing. I don't really know what else we could do here. Hopefully everything sounds good, but I don't know. So here's me from the future to tell you if it actually sounds good or not. Okay, so I got to say, I'm overall really impressed with this microphone. I had used it one other time on like a little recording for a song that I was doing, and it came out with a lot of background noise. So my immediate thought is, oh, okay, it just doesn't work very well. But I think the problem was that I was using a cable that didn't work very well. So for this video, I switched it over to the cable that I use all the time for my SM57. And all these recordings are surprisingly high quality. There's no background hissing, white noise or anything like that. And obviously I didn't do a side-by-side -side comparison, but this sounds like the same, if not almost a little better than the SM57. So you guys might be seeing this one as the new mic that I use for my videos because I'm actually really impressed with this thing. For 20 bucks, dude, literally go work at McDonald's for like half a day and you'll be able to afford like three of these things. Okay, I know there's a lot of controversy and a lot of debate about whether Behringer is actually a good company or not, this and that. I'll be honest, I'm pretty pro Behringer. I have a Behringer audio interface and I use a Behringer microphone on my kick drum when I record drums and I guess I have this thing too. Listen, I like cheap gear that works well and the Behringer stuff does exactly that. Some of their stuff is like plasticky or whatever, but it pretty much always works the way you need it to. And they always have cheaper products than the bazillion bajillion dollar alternatives out there. The reason they're able to do this is because they're a massive company with a bunch of money, like an unreal amount of money. There's a really good video that I watched that covers the whole Behringer thing should be right here. I'll link it. So they just have like a massive factory in China where they just pump out all these things that are like bootlegs of the real thing. And personally for me, I'm not sure or Focusrite or Roland or any of those other other massive companies. It's not affecting me, so I don't care personally. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this short little mic review here. Make sure you guys go check out my Instagram and all the other social media type things down in the description below if you'd like to do that. And I will see all of you next time. He's making a list.